How's that coming in? So, uh, my name is, is Matt Patrick. I work for the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, uh, the U.S. Geological Survey. And we're here on the rim of Halimamo Crater. And uh, today is March 19, 2018. And this uh, marks the 10-year anniversary of the summit eruption. Uh, began on March 19, 2008. So, uh, right behind me is the active lava lake in Halimamo Crater. And you can see uh, just, a, just to the side of me, a little bit of spattering. Uh, it's just dying out, but spattering here in the lake is very common. Now we're here today uh, to make a quick visit to do some daily measurements and observations. Uh, so one of the most important things that we track is the lake level, and that's what I have this laser rangefinder here to do. And we also make general visual observations. Uh, of, of the lake behavior. So right now you see some of that spattering just died out, but there's still some persistent spattering here in the, in the south part of the lake. So if you look at the lake surface, it's really interesting. It uh, has these large black crustal plates, and it's a little hard to see, but the upwelling area in the lake is here in the north part of the lake, uh, which is just in that direction there. And so the lava upwells in the north part of the lake, and then it flows towards the south. Uh, where it sinks and, and you know presumably cycles cycles downward um, and that's commonly uh, the spot that it sinks is commonly where the uh, the spattering is situated although spattering can really happen on any any area of the lake it's commonly in the uh, lake margins so what we're standing on right now is actually um, a lot of Pele's hair which is this uh, fil thin filaments of of lava and that Pele's hair is produced uh, during the spattering activity Basically, the spattering is large bubbles bursting and uh, ejecting droplets of lava, and the droplets have little tails, and it's the tails that form the Pele's hair. Um, so obviously, we're we're in um, we're here on the crater rim. Um, one of the things that we have to uh, one of the, the hazards in this general area is the is a hazard of explosive events. Uh, there have been a handful of explosions uh, from the lake, and they're triggered by large collapses of the crater walls. Uh, basically, the crater walls you can see are, are fairly unstable. The collapses can fall into the lake, and the lake is very gas-rich and frothy. And when the rocks impact that lake, they uh, trigger a very violent uh, explosion or ejection of, of gas and spatter. And so that's one of the reasons why we have to wear protective gear, like you see we're wearing helmets. Um, another hazard out here is the, obviously the gas. Uh, the lava lake is producing a, a lot of volcanic gas. And uh, one of the things, obviously, that one of the hazards is sulfur dioxide emission. And that's why we have to wear gas masks out here. Uh, of course, we also just wear basic protective clothing, like uh, fire-resistant uh, clothing as well. So, yeah, the, the weather is, uh, is kind of marginal right now, um, but I think it'll hold. So the lake, uh, gener general observations over the past day, the lake has been really steady. And that's not surprising uh, because uh, over the last few years we've actually had pr fairly steady activity. The lake level does fluctuate a bit, um, but, uh, but in general uh, the lake that you see now uh, is similar to how it's been over the past few years. Uh, one change though is that this lake is constantly enlarging. So the crater walls are, are commonly collapsing in. And then the lake enlarges just to fill that larger area, that larger volume. And so what we have now is, is one of the largest lava lakes on Earth. Um, but it's really unique in the sense that geologists are here every day uh, observing and documenting the activity. So we have a, a long record, a long detailed record of the lake activity. So I guess the question is, how did the lake come to be? Well, on March 19, 2008, the, uh, we had a, a small explosion that was, uh, well, this was really following several months of increasing seismic tremor and increasing gas emissions in late 2007, early 2018, uh, 2008. And March 19, 2008, we had a small explosion and that was associated with the opening of this new crater here, which we call the Overlook Crater. Originally that crater was about 100 feet wide um, and the lava in the first couple of years was very deep, about 200 yards below the floor of Halemama Crater. So 
So over the past decade, we've had lava rise into the crater, and we've also had the crater enlarging quite a bit. Now it's, it's about, um, along this axis, it's over 900 feet long. Uh, so beginning at 100 feet and going to enlarging to over 900 feet. And like I said, the, the lava was originally 200 yards or so uh, below the floor of Halimama Crater, and now it's more like 30 yards uh, below the rim there. So you just saw um, some small, minor bubble bursting in the lake surface. Uh, that's kind of interesting because we often have these um, isolated bubble bursts um, in the north part of the lake, and that corresponds with where the lava is upwelling. So those sporadic bubble bursts that you see um, might be bubbles that kind of are rising up from the conduit that's feeding into the lava into the base of the lake. So the lava is upwelling, like I said, in the north part of the lake, and it's traveling. Uh, uh, just, a, I guess, a, it's a few inches a second. Uh, and it takes about uh, 30 minutes or so to cross the lake surface. So it's hard to see, but, uh, but the lake surface is slowly migrating towards the south. I'll just step out of view so you can get a view of the lake. So, so I just want to uh, repeat that you know we're here uh, today to, uh, in part because it's the uh, 10th anniversary of the summit eruption here. Uh, like I said, the summit eruption began 10 years ago today. March 19, 2008 was the start of the summit eruption. And so this eruption has been going on for 10 years, which is obviously a remarkable duration for a, a volcanic eruption. And what's also remarkable is that this is only one of two long-term eruptions that Kilauea has at the moment. We also have the Pu'o'o eruption going on on the East Rift Zone. That's been going on for over 35 years. And uh, we often get a question of uh, how are these eruptions connected, and, that, and that's a great question because Kilauea is really um, uh, interesting and, and remarkable for the hydraulic connection that exists uh, from the summit along uh, the East Rift Zone. And this eruption and the Pu'o'o eruption uh, 12 miles away are both uh, jointly fed, they're basically uh, jointly supplied magma from the summit magma chamber that's below us here at a depth of a couple miles. There's a question, um, Janet's asking, uh, uh, what, uh, how high is the lava? It was, um, it was about 30 meters below the rim there. Oh, how hot. Um, so how hot is the lava? Uh, yeah, so uh, what you can see is the surface has these large black crustal plates. And uh, those crustal not ter well, they're, they're obviously hot, but they're much lower than the, the actual magmatic eruption temperature. Um, and unfortunately, I'm, I'm thinking in Celsius here. But the plates themselves are um, a couple hundred degrees Celsius, two or three hundred degrees Celsius. Um, that's way lower than uh, the eruption temperature, the, the, sur the temperature of the lava just below the surface, which is incandescent. That's around 1100 degrees Celsius. So the surface cools really instantaneously. Um, to form this black skin, and you can you can see that the the crust here is um, 
actually, if, if you zoom in, which we can't do right now, but if you look closely, um, you can see that the um, the crust is actually semi-flexible. Um, yeah, so it's more like a skin. Um, and obviously, because it's, it's thin, uh, it's probably just a couple inches thick, and it's obviously very hot. So it can actually bend and fold. You can actually get a sense of some of the folds on the lake surface. USGS Volcanoes. We apologize for the little break in connectivity. We are down here on the rim after all, but we're back with Matt Patrick from the USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. Yeah, so um, right now the, I just made a, a lake level measurement with the laser rangefinder. Uh, the lake is about 30 yards below the, the crater floor there. That's been... Uh, and, yeah, so I think we're going to wrap up soon. Uh, but I want to mention the USGS video that's on uh, the USGS YouTube channel. And it's a 24-minute video that gives a really nice overview of the, of the summit activity and the summit eruption. Um, some really great views and, and really great uh, clips uh, in that video. of the summit eruption. Uh, it started uh, March 19, 2008, but uh, really we're here to do our daily uh, lake level measurements and daily observations. Okay, so yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up. So uh, thanks again for, for, uh, for tuning in, and uh, we'll catch you later. Again, I guess we have a few more minutes, so um, yeah, I just um, one thing um, that we can talk about is the crater floor here. So we're on the rim of Halemama Crater, um, and you see in front of us, about uh, 80 yards below us, is crater floor, the, the floor of Halemama Crater. And you see in the, kind of the foreground here, you see this dark area, and these were overflows. So there was a time uh, in mid 2015 when the lake flowed up to, uh, rose up to the rim and, and began to spill over onto the floor of Halemama Crater. And it created this, uh, these flows of uh, Shelly Pohoihoi. These flows cover about a quarter of the floor of Halemama Crater. Uh, the rest of the floor was formed from earlier eruptions in the 60s and 70s. You'll also see on the top of some of these overflows some white blocks, and those were from at least some of them were from explosions um, recently that have deposited on top of the overflows. There's also a little bit on the north rim, um, some spatter from a recent collapse uh, just a week or so ago uh, that triggered a, a small explosion of spatter. Uh, spatter was deposited on the crater rim. 
Yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of steaming in the distance on the crater floor. And uh, you can see there's, there's obviously a lot of hot cracks. Um, some of these are, are magmatic gases, and you can actually see some of the sulfur deposits around these fumaroles. Um, some of it is also just uh, water vapor. There's been a lot of rain recently, so um, basically on, the, on the, much of the crater floor or the, or the caldera floor, the Kilauea caldera, we've had a lot of steaming um, just from uh, groundwater. Okay, so we're often um, asked, you know, what what are we sensing here? What's the um, like? What are we smelling? And um, actually, I smell clean air because we deliberately chose to be on the upwind side of the plume. So, um, yeah. So you, obviously, you can see there's a lot of gas coming up, um, and uh, we deliberately chose this spot to uh, to avoid that. Uh, still, occasionally, if you um, if you do walk by some of these fumarolic areas, you'll you'll get a smell of sulfur. Um, but yeah, in general, we're, we're trying to avoid the gas right now. So we just had a small bubble burst here in the north part of the lake again. These are these kind of quasi-periodic burst, uh, bubble bursts that happen in the north part of the lake. Corresponds with the area that lava is upwelling. You can also see on the crater walls there are these white patches. Um, kind of lighter colored patches, and those are recent collapses. So we talked about how the crater is expanding, it's, it's, it's constantly enlarging, and it enlarges through these large collapses. And uh, these white patches are basically fresh collapse scars. Uh, these collapses happened just in the last week. And like I said, um, sometimes, well, usually when these collapses impact the lake, they trigger uh, spattering of, of some size. and. Uh, Occasionally, if the collapses are large enough, they'll trigger an explosion where spatter can reach the rim of Halibama. Okay, so I think our time is up now. Um, we can't stay here too long for safety reasons, so I think we're going to sign out for, for real this time. And um, yeah, we finished what we needed to do. We made our lava level measurement. We made our basic observations. And uh, I think we're going to head back uh, to the vehicle now. So thanks again for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you later.